Hello and welcome to my new video, how to draw a city street view in one point perspective, step by step. In this video I'm going to show you one way to draw a city in one point perspective and to do that we're going to start with the horizon line which is a horizontal line which will be towards the bottom of the page and that will be the line which will be between the sky and the land and on that we draw a dot in the center and then from that we draw a angle line going towards the right and then another angled line, a diagonal line going towards the left. Now these two lines will be the road which are going towards the dot which is the vanishing point. Now from this vanishing point in the center of the horizontal line we need another line coming up towards the left which will be the height of some of the buildings on the left hand side of this street. And then we'll need another line going towards the right, which will be the height of most of the tops of the buildings on the right-hand side of the street. So we have our basic structure for the street already in place. Now we'll put a vertical line starting on the diagonal going down. And then from that vertical line, where it touches the diagonal line, we'll draw a right-angled line towards the right. And this will be the start of the side of one of the near buildings in our street. And then I do another vertical line and then we have the side rectangle of the nearest building. If I draw yet another vertical line, again from the diagonal, that will give me the length of the building. And then I can draw a triangle on the nearest side of the building and that will give me the pitch of the roof. Next, I need to work out the angle here that goes to the vanishing point. I won't draw the line all the way along, just to some extent, and sort of imagine it going to the vanishing point. And then I'll copy the diagonal line of the pitch of the roof for the further line of the pitch of the roof. And therefore, I've got my first basic building. Next, I'm going to draw another building, which is going to be behind this first building, with a tiny gap in between the two. So the vertical line is slightly to the left of the far side vertical line of the first building. Then I read it across with a horizontal line and then I put another pitched roof for the first few buildings. I don't know why, but they are. They're going to have pitched roofs. Then I'm sort of visualizing the diagonal line going towards the vertical without drawing it all the way along. And then I need to work out here if there's going to be any part of the side of the roof that I'm going to see. So it's going to be a really small, thin sliver of a roof, but I'll put it in anyway. And I can work that out again by reading to the vanishing point. Now on the left hand side, I need some buildings here. So I'll put a vertical line quite close to the left hand side. And then I'll put another vertical line and the, this will be the facade of the first building that I'll draw on the left hand side. Now this building I'm going to divide into equal stripes and all of these will be like floors of the building which will go, if they were continuous lines, to the vanishing point. And then I also use this technique to create the tops of the doors or maybe the bottoms of the windows or tops of the windows on the right hand side just by putting some lines, some diagonal lines which again will always go towards the vanishing point if they were to continue from where they are. So, next I will put a little door in here for the nearest building on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side I'll sort of echo that and put a door structure here, reading across from the vanishing point to find out where the top of the door goes, the angle of the top of the door, and then it's just up to me where the vertical line will go. And then I'm going to extend the vertical line on the left hand side to make this building taller. Indeed, I'll make the building to the left a bit taller because that will make it seem nearer. And then I'm going to place another building, again, not right next to the building with stripes, but a little gap in between it, and then the far wall of it as well. And these vertical lines always need to be vertical like the sides of your paper, the left and right hand sides of your paper. Now this building, I think I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated. So I put a little roof in here, like a pitched roof triangle. And then I can read across from the tops of these to the left 
at sort of 90 degree angles so that they're parallel to the horizontal line that we did earlier on and then that'll create the top of the building and then imagining this as some sort of church I might put a window in here so I'm working out from the other diagonal lines that I've already got and knowing where the vanishing point is I'm working out the top and the bottom of the window first because I know that the vertical lines are just going to be vertical I'll put in some small markings within the window just to show that it's an area which has some complexity to it. And then below the window, I need some sort of door or entrance way to this building. And I've made it quite large here. I'll probably put an inner doorway or some stairs in here just to break it down into a more reasonable size. Quite often in churches, you have a big door and then within the big door, there's a smaller door. Anyway, I'm just making up these buildings as sort of interesting shapes. And here I'm going to divide this building up into vertical lines and I think this will help with the structure of this building. Next, on the right hand side, I think I need a few more buildings. So again, I'm going to do a vertical line which isn't touching the previous line and then I'll just top and tail it with a right angle going towards the right. And then that will be the side of the building. And then I'll work out where the top of this new building will go and how far back it will go. I don't want to go too near to the horizontal line and the vanishing point because otherwise it looks like an endless building. So you can stop these buildings quite short by making the vertical lines quite close to each other, particularly as they get nearer and nearer to the vanishing point. And here I'll just put in some windows. It's quite a good idea when you're doing windows as you do the vertical lines on them that you just read them down so that the windows on the buildings that you're producing are symmetrical and in line with each other. It'll just look at, make it look more like a building. So here on the left I feel that I need a taller building so I might just increase the size of some aspects of this building on the left. And here the line that's, that I've just put in would be going more or less to the vanishing point. And then here's yet another vertical line. Now I think rather than have this just a box-like cuboid shape, I need to put some lines on it, like the lines in the lower part of the building. But I'll do these lines a little bit nearer to each other than the first time that I did it. And again, I'm reading from the vanishing point. So I can sort of visualize in my mind's eye where these lines would end up. But I'm not doing all the sort of structure lines or scaffolding lines because I'm just using a pen on paper and if I did all the working out lines it would get too complicated for you and me so I'm just sort of making it up as I go along which means that every line that I do I need to keep so these lines on the going towards the left which are horizontal they're nice and straightforward lines and they give some solidity to the building so we've got a corner of a building there and then beyond the church, I'm going to do some smaller buildings. Or well, some of them will be smaller, but some of them will just be smaller because they're further away. But they might actually be bigger buildings than the buildings that are nearer. I think that would be quite fun to do. So some of the buildings can be above the line that we originally did, which was the line which showed where most of the buildings will stop. And here, I think on the left-hand side, I do two big panels, not quite sure what they are but they'll just make the nearest part of the building seem quite up close because they're bigger shapes. And then here towards the vanishing point, I'll do some smaller buildings. Again, a gap, that's a pretty small building there. So maybe the next building will be a bit taller. And then I'll just extend that above the line. And then it's quite nice, I think, when buildings sort of are tucked behind other buildings, it gives a nice sense of space and you can create this space that you wish to achieve. So on the left hand side I think I have a taller building which is far away the base of a skyscraper. So I put that in, it's a bit like a cereal box and then I just do lines along here. So because we've got most of the shapes in now I'm going to speed up this video a little bit. We're about um, just over nine minutes into the video. So I just put in the pavements of the streets along the either side here so a lot of the things from this stage on I'm just repeating. So on the right hand side I put a big box like shape. 
and then on the left hand side I'll make this tower, this skyscraper quite thin and have a little gap in between itself and the building to its left just to create some tension and then put some lines down on one side of the building. I'm not really going to do a shading but I'll just give the illusion of shading and tone a little bit by how close I keep some of the lines. So along in this building on the right, if I just do a few dashes at the top and then I can read those lines down and then I get some repeated um, windows and then just put a roof on this earlier building. I think on the right hand side I'm going to have to invent something on the first building that I did just to make it look a bit more complicated because it's got the structural lines of the first few lines that we did on the drawing. On the left hand side of this church I'm doing some horizontal lines which are diagonal because they're in perspective going to the vanishing point putting the roofs in not making them jet black but just putting them making them a little bit darker by adding lines to them and again vertical lines on this building and then horizontal lines going towards the vanishing point so at this stage I'm trying to get some scale to the buildings I think I want to make it a little bit more dramatic so I'm going to put some more buildings in the background as I speed up this video a little bit more again because the next stage really is just to put many many more windows in and they all need to follow the rules, the basic structure of a one point perspective drawing which is keeping all the verticals vertical, all the horizontals horizontal and then all the lines which are horizontal but are going away from us at an angle they all need to end up at the vanishing point so it's a simplified way of seeing things. It's not really what reality looks like, but it's quite a useful thing to... Um, it's a useful way to depict a three-dimensional scene with a piece of paper and a pen in a two-dimensional way. So speeding along here, you can see the development of putting more and more buildings in. Well, I hope you like this video and I hope it's useful for your own drawing. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Circle Line Art School, for many, many more art videos. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.